It's the Memphis Sports Network. WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett Memphis. WMFS FM and HD1 Bartlett, WMFS Memphis. ESPN 790 AM and 92.9 FM ESPN. The views and opinions of the hosts or guests of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of the management or staff of Intercom Memphis. Sunrise, new days dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way you can find. Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this uh, after Christmas show, uh, almost a new year and this is our fifth Saturday, which means normally that uh, Gene Smith and Charlie Covington are in studio, but we kind of switch things up. I, I thought you folks out there would like to know a little about all of our co-hosts. We have guys on this show that really, uh, that's the reason this show is so successful, because I can't sit here and talk for 90 minutes, but I'm able to coach some friends on, and they uh, we have a system here, and and it's about to change because in coming up in January, we're going to have some different time slots. But uh, this is normally a Charlie Covington, our poet laureate, and the one and only other half of the Brother Daryl and Daryl show is the uh, illustrious, the majestic, the man of many words. Infamous. Imp- <laughs> That's more than likely for him. That is Gene Smith. And Good morning. He, Good morning. And now, we're, and now we also we, Charlie will be coming on later in the show today because he is in Birmingham with his uh, son and their family. He and his wife are down there, but he will be here in the last segment to do his year-end poem. And I know Charlie. Uh, they're he, all good. Yeah, they're all good. And we're gonna yeah. we're gonna pipe in Charlie here. But uh, speaking of. Uh, Bonus time. I mean, you know, we we get Ron twice. Now, in one month, we're going to get Ron Wong three times. And now, right now, we have a Smith in here. Yes. And we have a Wong in here. Two of the most last names, yeah. Yes, but how many more uh, Wongs are there than Smiths, Ron Wong? Good morning, everybody. First of all, there are more Wongs than Smiths and Joneses put together. I wanted you to hear that. Yeah, that, I believe that. So you need to get out there and work for the Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> My working days are over. Oh, your working days are over? You can't have any uh, help on that? Yeah, so. no. I got grandkids, though. All right. That's what we, you know, these two guys here, and, and of course I've known both of them uh, since I was in uh, diapers. Boy, was that a sight. Yeah, See, y'all it are running around down there in diapers. <laughs> I just can't view it right now. But uh, Well, now they use Pampers. Uh, Let's don't go any further. <laughs> and what no, gets me when a they box. are depends now. Yeah, that's depends. right. Uh, older guys. Oh, is yeah. that what we're going to start are with? Depends yeah. but now. This is got this special show is going to. Uh, we're going to talk to all of our co-hosts, and I couldn't think of the two better ones. Uh, you know, Dave Yabert is with Gene normally on uh, open mic Saturday when I'm off prancing in the woods or something like that, which I will be uh, next week uh, somewhere. But I. Let's talk a little bit about Ron Wong and Gene Smith. Ron, let's kick it over to you. A lot of our folks have asked uh, 
uh, well, just uh, a little bit of notch about your career. You you were born in California. Born in Sacramento, California. Okay. And uh, lived there for 12 years before I moved to Memphis, Tennessee in September of 1960. And so you 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 went to ended up at Westwood High. Westwood right? High School, then went on to Memphis State University, entered the U.S. Navy, and served uh, almost four years in the Navy, of which I spent four tours in Vietnam. Got out of the Navy, uh, got into the fishing yes, scene did. pretty yeah. big. Uh, yeah. Went to work for Surplus City for those of you that are That's old right. enough to I remember. remember. Yeah. And uh, was a sporting goods manager and buyer for yeah. the fishing department and hunting department. And then I went on to FedEx for a great 34 years. And, uh, wow, what a company. When I started FedEx, uh-huh. they were averaging about 3,000 packages a day. 3,000 a day. A day. Not an hour or anything like that. Right. A day. A day. Okay. And, you know, now they're... Um, they're pushing through three million packages. Wow! Now you Amazing. now you were a global analyst at FedEx or something like that. Uh, yeah. I started out uh, buying aircraft parts. Okay, and right. then I <laughs> moved on to become a manager in uh, material planning for all of the other materials to for the company to operate. Okay, and then. For my last 15 years, I went into corporate communications uh-huh. to work in the community relations department where I went and planned, organized, managed, and reported on volunteer programs for FedEx employees in the U.S. And so that, that, that was great. And while I was doing all of that, I did some tournament fishing. I did, did that for about 22, 23 years. Yeah, yeah. Had my sponsors. Won the St. Jude Bass Classic when, when it was just one <laughs> one person in the boat, right? Yeah, uh, did that's, that. That's pretty tough. That's uh, that pretty... was 1979, the first time I won it. So I'm going to date myself. Here. Well, that's all right. That's what we want. And uh, you know, then in 1983 again, I I got lucky again uh-huh. and uh, won it then. And at the time, yes, it was a uh, every person. 101. Against each other. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, at the time they were drawing about 600, 650 anglers yeah. uh, every year. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, at one time it was the largest bass tournament east of the Mississippi. And uh, so. Well, I know you did that, but the community work, a lot of folks, uh, I, I don't do know anybody of- <laughs> that doesn't get. That gives more of his time, and this is this. That's why this show uh, today is going to be really good because uh, I've got a great crew that helps me uh, do this show. And Ron, if anybody, uh, I mean, I, I'm amazed. We go to the restaurant at the radio show, uh, uh, the radio station's <laughs> Christmas meal, and it, it, the only one that hugged the owner was Ron. I mean, you know, <laughs> and I sat with Ron. The next thing I know, he's. Uh, uh, Felicia Suzanne and yep. uh, uh, comes out and who, she don't hug anybody else, even the guy that paid the check. <laughs> she did. So you are involved in a lot of. Uh, yes, uh, you know what? Tell, tell I, I, I'm so fortunate of of everything that I've incurred in my life, and I think it's important to give back whenever you can, and mm-hmm. that's for everybody. And so uh, I've been very fortunate to sit on quite a few different nonprofit boards i still sit on four of them today yes uh the march of dimes the commission on missing and exploited children tennessee outdoor writers association and the autozone liberty ball yes he does yes and you will uh you know uh, and i do a lot of work now still with make a wish Uh, what a great great organization yeah and i've done work uh with big brothers big sisters yeah portal leith yeah and uh, it's just so. part of Ron's makeup right there. And I know that uh, uh, one of the most well-known guys, and, and, and we're going to come back to Ron, but well-known is is Gene Smith here. I mean, uh, how many people has yes. lives has Gene touched? Well, it's amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, a lot of you folks uh, know Gene. You probably took hunter safety from Gene because I, thousands of uh, 
adults and kids have taken that. But, Gene, tell our listeners a little about you because you grew up in what, – what, 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 in Fraser, did you? No, I, I lived in North Memphis. North went, Memphis. Went to Maury Elementary School on Bellevue. Uh huh. Then I went to Humes High School. Uh huh. Elvis was there the first first two years I was there. Oh, you are. Yeah. yeah y'all and y'all, you, you well, saw I him seen in him, school. But I, I didn't. I didn't really know him. He had a, he had his first song out uh, when I was in the eighth grade. Okay. Yeah. All right. At, and um, but we you used to, we used to go down on Main Street and sit around. He had a pink and white. Uh, 55 or 56 Ford uh, Crown Victoria then. Uh, and, and, and and what were you driving? Uh, shoes. <laughs> he was walking. <laughs> <laughs> driving shoes. Gene Smith. And, uh, but you grew up and uh, and you you went to work for the Board of Education. Was yeah, that well, your I, first job? Or no, was that? first job was downtown 311 South Main in Memphis Seating. Memphis Seating. I remember we watched, watched the guys from Route 66 come in. In that Corvette across the street in that hotel. Really? I mean, when they was filming the movie. Uh-huh, yeah. And when I left there, I went to uh, Bruce Lumber Company. I was there for a long time. Uh-huh. My dad worked there when I was born. Okay. And I was making $1.17 an hour. $1.17 yeah, an was, hour. I don't know how. I, how can I, you remember that? You, oh, it, yeah. It, it well, I, still got, I still got check stubs. Oh, well, you should cash them. Yeah, I know, so, but uh, So you worked at Bruce, and then you went. Uh, how'd you get into the Board of Education? Well, I worked. Or, uh, raising a family, worked two or three jobs. I, I worked at Colin Stokes Music Company uh-huh. rep- repairing instruments. So a buddy of mine, uh, Tommy Carr, he was working there too. Yeah. Well, he, Brian Samilton decided to talk to school system into having their own repair shop. And so that's how you became a, a instrument repair man. Correct. And you spent how long with the, with the Board of Education? 44 years. Forty-four years repairing instruments, right? Yeah, every, almost everything in my adult life I dealt with children. You did, and whether I give them instruments to play, or I took them hunting, or fishing, or I had them in my hunter ed class. And and the hunter, let's talk to hunter hunter ed part of this because you did this, you and your wife Vicky, right? As a as a partnership, did uh, how, how long? And you're still doing them now. I know, yeah, I'm uh, still doing them. Yeah, I, I I've been blessed. Uh, TWR is. Gave me a lot of awards. I won uh, Region One award, which is uh, Region One, right. just out of uh, Tennessee River. Yeah, uh-huh. I got that three times. I got the state four times. I got the international hunter education one time. Then I got, of course, I got one from Ducks Unlimited and the Wild Turkey Federation and the Sierra Club. Sierra Club, um, all these different things. Yeah, and- Sierra Club. That was pretty new. Ron deals with. People like that too. I had some kids with the Down syndrome, and I helped them pull them through the hunter ed class. They knew everything, and of course they're gonna have they have an adult with them hunting. Yes, uh, and uh, but but the, that must be one of your touching moments. Oh yeah, uh, it was it was remarkable. Well, one time one of my classes, uh, I had this family of four boys, and the, and the dad was there. Yeah, and one kid had mu- uh, muscular. Dictionary, Dictionary, how you say yeah, it? Uh, yeah uh-huh. he couldn't he had he couldn't have didn't have any motor skills uh-huh yeah but back in those days we have them memorize the ten commandments of firearm safety uh-huh well usually i had all the kids to write them well of course he couldn't write so yeah. i took him out in the hall and it he struggled pretty good but he knew him word for word he did yeah and that's what i went in there and told those teenage boys that take life so lightly yeah did this uh, young man struggle but he outdid them yes and uh with his handicap and you and and you continue teaching the hunter education uh, uh and how old are you now i'll be 77 uh, 76 uh, you, on, on my birthday january uh, the 1st january the 1st he is a wow a d- new year's baby yeah. new year's baby <laughs> oh. what a cute guy he was back then yeah so. i was number i was number two yeah. mama said she heard the bells and whistles going off when she was oh so you were, so you were almost the first almost first yeah oh well you can't handle that to it ron wong is first we know and ron uh you're you're love of kids and things along that line uh, matches gene and fishing rodeos and things like that and folks uh, when ron posts a picture of a fish that's not the same <laughs> one over and over i can tell you if you call ron's number right now he said gone fishing yeah leave yeah. a message or something along that line and uh you know as long as it's over 35 degrees i'll go um well you're you're pushing it I, this weekend i, I, I used would, to <laughs> 
<laughs> I, you know, I used to go anytime, but uh, yeah. it's gotten to the point to where it's no fun to play with the ice oh, on, yeah. on your equipment Dangerous. more than yeah. anything else. But you, uh, what's the biggest bass you've ever caught? 11 pounds, one ounce. Ooh, doggies. That's nice. That's pretty nice. good one. Oh, they call that a hog? Uh, that's a pretty good that's one. A, that's and, two uh, five-pounders with a little little bit of space yeah. left yep. over, yeah. you know, when, yep. when you do that. But uh, So that's uh, that's a large mouth. Now, you, you are really, I, I don't know anybody more knowledgeable than you, and you, you don't just pick this up. Read magazines, unless it's a Mid South Hunting Fishing magazine, <laughs> but uh, which is a good one. Which is a good one, but uh, I'll, t- I'll talk a little bit about you know, trying to keep up with, and, and we're going to close out here. Just uh, let's let Ron close us out a little bit about uh, how do you learn? There's people out there that look to Ron Wong, so I'll never be able to fish like Ron Wong. But you can actually. Uh, there's so much knowledge out there. So there, so, there is an awful lot of knowledge out there. And, you know, what I recommend to everybody now, especially if you're getting into the sport mm-hmm. or you've been in it, but you don't know some of the things that you should know. Right. Knot tying comes to uh, as a great example. Oh, Gotta yeah. tie good knots. Knot tying, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you're, and, and the knot that you tie, you've told me. You is know, the, I, I tie a polymer knot a lot. I no. use a blood knot <laughs> to put lines together. But use Google and YouTube yes, because they yeah. take it step by step to do what you want to do. In terms of equipment, the best thing you can do is talk to people that have used the equipment. Yeah, yeah. And also, you can do a lot of research on it online. However, there's nothing like putting it into your hand and feeling something. Feeling it, yeah. Before you buy a rod and reel. Uh, in terms of lures, and I've told you guys many <laughs> times, there's only two kind of lures. Yep. One yep. that catches fish and one that catches fishermen. That's it. Yeah. And that's written. And I know my son, my son will vouch for that. He has been in Ron's house and uh, and was overwhelmed with how many uh, rods and reels. And I'm not giving away. I can Ron, imagine. Yeah. But uh, Ron knows his stuff. Can let, can we take that first break? This is going to start us on a roll because we're going to go right through all of our uh, co-hosts and we got Frank uh, Barton, Bill Cooksey, John Gordon. John's in the duck blind this morning. And then Dave Gabbard and then Charlie Covington. We're going to close out with Charlie Covington and our main fill-in guy. I mean, when we need anybody, he even had not open the door for us today. It's Stuart Settles. And a lot of folks don't know that Stuart's, um, he's, he's, he's juggling schedules here to uh, be our man when Greg Ratliff can't be here. But we'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. You can find 